So in the last video, we built the auth provider so that our app knows whether we're logged in or not, but we still don't have the ability to actually log in. So that's what we're going to work on in this video. If we click on the login slash signup link, it takes us to the slash auth page, which doesn't yet use our layout. So we're going to first go in and make that change. So if we go into pages, auth, we can uncomment out the, uh, the layout import and then add that in here. So layout and what shows up in the main section is this div. So if we go back to, the, to Chrome, we can see that the nav shows up now. And now we're gonna focus on replacing this word auth with the actual login form. So this login form, we're not gonna put it in this page level component. We're actually going to put it within this um, Firebase auth component that we're going to build now. So we're going to replace this div with Firebase auth. And it's going to give us an error because it doesn't yet exist, but that's what we're going to go build. So it's in source components, Firebase auth. Firebase auth. And we're going to start by uncommenting all of these imports so that we can start building um, the actual body of this. And we're using a package called React Firebase UI, which builds a lot of the UI for us on that nice little login box where you can enter in your email. It saves us a lot of the hassle and it looks great too but you need to set up some configuration first for it to work correctly. So we're gonna set that up here and we're gonna call it Firebase Auth Config. And that is equal to sign in flow. And this is equal to pop up. And then below that, we need to set up some sign in options. And that's going to be an array that has an object inside where the first one contains provider. Now the value from this for this comes from firebase.auth dot email auth provider dot provider ID in all capital letters. And then we can down below add one just other thing, a require display name is false because we don't actually have a display name in this application. So down below these sign in options, we can say basically where to redirect the user to once they successfully log in. So what we're going to do is we're going to say sign in successful URL is equal to slash. So just take the user to the home page once they log in. So now for the actual component itself. So we called this Firebase Auth, if you remember from the one we imported over here. And that is going to be type of function component. And it's going to be an arrow function. And why don't we start with what it returns? So it's going to return a div and this div is going to be styled a little bit. So we're going to just give it some margin top. And inside of the div, we're going to use um, styled Firebase auth, this import here. So styled Firebase auth. And we need to pass it the UI config that we set up above here. So that's equal to Firebase auth config like that. And one other thing, we need to give it an instance of Firebase auth. So we just say Firebase auth is equal to Firebase dot auth, but we call that function. So if we do that um, and we export it, so export default Firebase auth, just like that. Firebase auth is declared, but it's never used. I just used it there. Okay, I'm not sure why it's freaking out yet, but hopefully it will uh, fix itself. Now function, oh, maybe that's why, component. Okay, we're all good now. So this works, right? But if you do a hard refresh, um, you'll actually, and you go into the inspect, you should see an error, invalid sign in successful URL. That's because it's sign in success URL. So it's a good thing to check your console. You can figure out all of the errors that you make. Sign in success URL, reload this. Okay. Well, sometimes I've noticed an issue that comes up because um, Next.js sometimes tries to render it first on the server, but this styled Firebase auth doesn't like to be rendered on the server. It only works in the browser. So we're going to just add a little trick to make sure that it only ever runs in the browser. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to set 
um, a state variable called render auth and set render auth. And this will be equal to use state, and it's going to start out as false. So basically, if we add in a little ternary here to say if render auth, um, render that, otherwise null. So it's only ever going to show this when render auth is true. Right now it's false. So if we were to come back here, we've got nothing on the screen. So what we can do is use the use effect hook um, because that only runs in the browser because it happens after the initial render. So when it's doing server side rendering, it only does the sort of first render and it doesn't do all of the stuff that occurs after. So if we use effect here and we have it just run once, so basically on component mount, what we can do is after the first render, so it runs through once, the use effect runs, we can change um, set render auth to true. And because state value has changed, it will trigger the re-render. And at that point, it will actually show our styled Firebase auth. So even though I wasn't seeing an error there, I have in the past because Firebase only wants to run in the browser. And that looks like it's working now. It's showing up after the initial render. So why don't we authenticate? So I'm going to put in my email address next and it asks for my password. So I'm going to put in that um, and it's going to log me in. So it sent me to the home page because remember sign in success URL sent me there. And notice that the nav detects that I'm actually logged in now. And the reason for that, if we go back to this use auth, is because we've got this listener here um, on ID token changed. So once we authenticated, this would have been called, uh, giving us a user. If we have the user, we basically get the user's token, put the user into our state, which is provided to the rest of our app via this context that we set up here. And that trickles down and now our nav knows that we're actually logged in. So the thing I wanted to do next is basically, if I go to slash auth again, when I'm already authenticated, this page doesn't really make sense to show to the user. So what I actually wanna do is just kick them out and send them back to the home page prior to them seeing this page when they're logged in. But for us to do that, we're actually going to add in some server side code. So we're going to close that go back to this auth page. And I mentioned before, well, Next.js is a full stack um, React framework. And it's full stack because it runs not only in the browser, but it has some functionality that runs on the server too. So any page in the API folder runs on the server, but components can also export special, um, special functions. They sort of look like hooks, but they're just functions. And this one that we're gonna work with, get server side props, actually runs on the server, not the browser. So what we can do is basically intercept that request if we see that the user is logged in and kick them over to the home page before this component actually gets rendered. So we're going to export, first of all, import those there. And then we're gonna export a function called get server side props. Its type is going to be one that comes from next JS called get server side props here. And then it is going to be equal to an async function that receives two things we're going to work with, a request and a response. And then we have the rest of the arrow function here. So the first thing we're going to do, although it's going to fail until we implement this load ID token, we basically want to check if the user's logged in or not. If they have that um, token being submitted with the request in the cookie that we set up earlier. So we're going to say const user ID is equal to await load ID token. And we want to pass to this the request, but we're just going to convert it to a different type. Um, if we hover here, it's type incoming message. I actually want to say that it's next API request, which is uh, very similar. It just has a few extra things from Next.js. So we're going to set this and why don't we implement the rest of this function, but we won't really know if it works or not until we do this load ID token. So we'll say, actually, why don't we for now just console.log so that we can see what's being returned and we'll implement the rest later. 
So this is complaining right now because it wants us to return an object that contains props because normally the result of this is passed as props to the page that it's being rendered. This way you can generate some data on the server side and get it to render um, server side this component here. Okay, so we need to go implement load ID token from SRC auth Firebase admin. So if we go to SRC auth Firebase admin, we're going to imp, um, uncomment out these uh, two imports here, and we're going to start working on that uh, load ID token function. So we're going to say export const load ID token, and it's going to be an async um, function. And remember what we sent to it, we sent it the request as a next API request. So we're going to receive that here. So request and its type is next API request. And what we can also do is tell it what we're going to return as a result from this function. So because it's async, that means it returns a promise. So we're gonna start with that. And inside of these angly brackets here is what the promise is going to resolve to. So it's going to resolve to either a string if the user's logged in with their user ID or null if the user is not logged in. So we need to go and implement the body of this function now. So the first thing we're going to check is basically, is there even a token cookie in the request? So we're gonna say if there's not a request.cookies.token, we're just gonna return null because that means the user is not logged in. If there is a token there in the, in the cookie, we need to verify that it's a real token and it's not just someone messing with us and sending up gibberish in that, uh, in that cookie. So we're gonna say const the decoded token is equal to await, and then we're gonna create a function called verify ID token that um, is given the token and it's gonna do the job of verifying that it exists or not. So we have a lot of red TypeScript errors right now, but at the end of this video, it will all be good. So let's go create verify ID token. So const verify ID token is equal to, it's going to receive the token, this right here, and that token is going to be a string. And the first thing we're going to do is basically just set up a variable that has our Firebase private key. So the private key comes from our environment variables. So we have one called Firebase private key here. And we're gonna set this up called Firebase um, private key. And it will be equal, so type is string, and it's going to be equal to process.env.firebase private key, like this. And it's um, giving us a mis an error right now. And that is because this thing right here could be a string or undefined, but we said that our variable was going to be a string. So we'll just use something called nullish coalescing to basically say if this thing is nullish, let's just return an empty string. I know it's not gonna ever be the case because I'm the one that set up that environment variable, but just to keep TypeScript happy, we're gonna do it that way. Next thing we're going to do is um, use this admin imported from Firebase admin we want to just check if it's already been initialized. So we're going to say if not admin.apps.length, that means we need to initialize our admin app. And we're going to call admin.initialize app. And we need to give it some, um, some credentials here. So credential is equal to, and what we're going to do is we're going to say admin.credential.cert. We basically need to get the admin cert credentials or credential cert. And we do that by passing in three values here. So the first one is the project ID, oops, project ID. And you can see it's nice, it's typed. So as I start to type this, it gives me hints and whatnot. And this will come from our process.env.next public Firebase project ID. And the second value is the client email. So we'll say process dot env dot firebase client email which we had set up at one of the earlier videos and the last value is this private key that we put into a variable up here 
And the reason I put it into a variable is just to make it a little easier because we're going to say Firebase private key, but then we're going to replace any weird values in it. So this locally would work like this, but I found when I, oh, I know why the highlighting is off here, my arrow function. Um, but I found that when I deployed this to Vercel and I copied my private key up to Vercel, it was getting a weird error that the, the cert was formatted invalid. So if you just do this replace function and we basically look for slash slash n globally and we replace it with just a single slash n, that will fix. So for some reason, when you add this um, environment variable that does contain slash n's, it's almost like they add an extra slash to the beginning of that and that messes with things. So we're just gonna do this replace here and that should make it happy. So after we're sure that the app, the admin app has been initialized, we need to return whether the token is actual real or not, whether it's verified. So we're gonna return admin.auth and then they come with a function called verify ID token. So we're gonna pass in this token here and then we're just going to catch in case there's an exception and we'll just return null if that's the case. Basically it means if there's an exception that the token is not valid. So now we can come back down here to decoded and decoded, let me just get it a little higher on the screen. It's going to be either auth.decodedID token or null if it wasn't able to decode or verify the token correctly. So let's handle the null use case first. So if there's nothing in decoded, well, that means we're just gonna say the user's not authenticated, return null. Finally, we know that the user's token is valid, so we can return their user ID. So decoded.uid is the value that we're going to be returning. So it looks like after making that change, TypeScript is happy. Sorry, I made some mistakes up here with this arrow function and whatnot, but it looks like everything's good. So if I were to go back here to auth, this code is happy now. It's returning us either a string or null, and I'm just gonna be logging this out to the console. So because this happens server side, if I were to refresh, refresh here, you're not gonna see anything in this console, um, nothing here the console you're gonna see it in is actually over here on the server. So what we can see here is my console.log is my user ID is this thing here. So that means that my user's authenticated. This is my user ID for the Lee Halliday um, email address. So what did we actually wanna do if the user's authenticated? We basically wanted to redirect them back to the homepage. So what we can do is we can say, if there's a user ID, we're going to take this response object, which is a server response, and we're gonna set a header on it. We're gonna say the location is the home page. We're gonna set the HTTP status code to 302, which is a redirect, and then we're gonna end this response. So this little if statement here will cause the user to be sent over to the home page. So if I refresh here, let me just uh, go to slash auth. And you can see it's redirecting the user, no errors this time. It's redirecting the user over to the home page if they happen to go to slash auth, but they're authenticated. Now we could fix that by logging out and that calls the logout function from Firebase. It unsets the cookie and all of that stuff. So if we were to go to slash auth now, it should show us the login form. <laughs> Disk is almost full. So let me just log in and then we're done what we wanted to accomplish in this video. Log in again, it's all good. So let me just stop the server. What did we do in this video? We implemented the auth login page and then we also added in some ability on the back end to detect if the user's actually um, logged in by verifying their login token and then we redirected them out of the auth page back to the home page, um, if that was the case. All right, now it's time, um, this video is done, so let's move on to the next.